Libya is one of the most complicated stories on earth. Gaddafi was in power since 1969. It was more than four decades, 42 years. The Arabs bring up rising in 2011. Four times Libya. They're saying that since 2011, this country has gone into complete chaos. We saved a lot of Libyan lives. I want now to Libya. Now we are going to Libya. Now we Libya, a country torn apart by civil war for the past decade. But how is the situation on the ground now, today? Gaining access into Libya is extremely difficult and complicated. No tourists are allowed. Only business visas are issued. After two years of trying to get into Libya, I was finally able to obtain a business visa for this extremely restricted and controlled country. So, here we go. <laughs> It's only gonna get better and better. Comme l'exigent les Libyens eux-mêmes. Now, could we have done more after uh, the uh, Gaddafi regime uh, was ended? Well, that's always, uh, uh, you know, second guessing, and I'm sure that there's more we could have done. But let's look at what we did do. A complex and highly dangerous situation. The international effort that we have led in Libya. We finally have hope that our nightmare of 40 years will soon be over. Welcome back to Libya. Here we are near the Algerian and Tunisian borders. About to jump in a car and go explore around this region. We're staying in this huge luxury hotel. I'll show it to you later in the video, but I just want to quickly say while I'm kind of by myself that please uh, take these videos as um, I'm kind of quite restricted in what I can and can't film in this country, to be honest. They try to take you to historical sites, which is interesting and everything, but personally for making videos, I'm more interested in filming the people and, and how they feel in the, in the current times and how they're living and everything. But I'm gonna try and talk to some of the people that we'll meet out in public, even though we've been kind of told that that's not allowed. Anyway. We'll come back to this massive hotel. It's quite strange. It's got low-key North Korea vibes. And uh, then we're going to go out to meet some like boy racers in the desert or something. Anyway, it's a really interesting country. I'm just kind of figuring it out. Lots to learn. Lots of strange rules underlying that you have to be careful of. The police are constantly tracking us. They know where we are at what time. So, Mr. Bashir, what do you do here for a job? He's like the supervisor for this particular building. He was born in, in here, in this old town, 1950. 1950. And what changes have you seen in this town from 1950 to 2021? Oh. <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> Everything has changed. Yeah. For the better or for the worse? For the worse. The cost of living gone up a great deal. It used to be nice and cheap. Now it's very expensive. Inflation. Inflation. Yeah. So, so his wages was like 30 dinar. And you could survive in that very nicely. Mm -hmm. Now it's even above a thousand dinar and it's barely enough. Do you feel secure and safe here? Much, much better, much yes. better yeah. Economically it's harder, but security it's better. <laughs> what do you prefer then? Do you prefer to have less access to money and more access to safety or vice versa? <laughs> There's some police behind that wall watching us. Okay, so a few hours have passed 
and we've spent time in this old city which was built like 3,000 years ago. The last inhabitants left though in the 80s and it's been really interesting. We've seen a lot of beautiful sights and everything and it's quite incredible to be here. There's no other tourists here. Apparently foreigners like never come here. Apparently the word's going around that there's a foreigner in the town and we've been assigned police officers. There's police officers following us everywhere. It started with just two and then all of a sudden there were five following us around. They say it's for our own safety. There were some bullet holes on the outside of the, the fortress and uh, then our guide said there, were, there was no fighting inside just outside in 2011 after the revolution we did find old bullets on the ground inside anyway I better not stray too far but yeah as I said before this is interesting to me um, but in terms of making videos you know there's plenty of great documentaries about the history of North Africa and things so I'm gonna try and you know do what I can to to meet the people and show you but yeah just keep in mind that it's extremely controlled I've managed to just actually sneak away here normally we're being monitored all the time we're gonna go into a house now and we're gonna have some lunch and uh, then I'll we'll head back to the hotel and I'll show you the strange empty hotel there <laughs> Here we have Mecca up here. Right, so we're here with Muhammad Ali. Yes. And Muhammad's been showing us around the old city here today. You mentioned earlier that you spent time living in the UK, in Scotland and England. Yes. Uh I've been there for study, nearly two years. I study my main job, air traffic controller. I learned many things there. I improved my English. And how were the people in, in England and Scotland? Oh, oh yeah, I'm telling you that, the fact. Scotland, more friendly than English. Right. <laughs> really. And you've been back in Libya for 30 or so years now, right? Yes, yeah. From 1980, 41, 41 years. 41 years, yeah. yeah. And, and what have been the main differences in those 41 years that you've seen in the country? Everything different, really. Before, I, 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 I prefer before than now. Okay. Now we are, we, are, we are living really in bad condition. Really? Yeah, we are not... It's okay now, better than before, for seven or eight years ago. But it's okay. In your day-to-day -day life, what is the, the hardest things then? It's economy. Little bit. Economy. Yeah, a little it's, bit. But it's, uh, now it's uh, Gaddafi, I'm speaking about Gaddafi, it's now it's Gaddafi's safety. Even when we have a war here in, in Libya, mm -hmm. yeah, Gaddafi is uh, maybe you, number one. You feel safe here? Yeah, for, for yourself, yeah. You don't see many foreigners come now since 2011? Yeah, really, yeah. yeah. Not sometimes, we have sometimes coming here in Gaddafi, VIB. Diplomats. Uh, yeah, diplomats. Uh, yeah. That's all, yeah. And do you think that in the coming decade that more people will start coming here? I hope in the future, maybe mm -hmm. when when Libya it will be safe direction or it's uh, what I call... Uh, uh, Positive direction. Uh, exactly. Many people in, in the West and where I'm from, they would be worried about visiting Libya because of safety. And I was one of those. I was a bit concerned coming For, here. Yeah. And what would you what say? Do, what do you find now? I feel a lot safer than I expected. Really safe, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Of course, everyone would like to, to give you uh, uh, some bad uh, information. Really, believe me, it's li uh, Libya, it's really, it's okay. Now, maybe two or three years ago, it's safe. Some things you hear about the bombing everywhere. Mm -hmm. Some things, even in England, even in U USA, you find bombing, or maybe suddenly, you say, this is a life. Sorry for that. But the Gadamas, our Libya especially, it's safe. So you recommend people to come visit Libya? Sure. Right. Sure, yes. Cool. And they're going to better now. It'll improve. Yeah, improve, yeah. Okay. Today, better than yesterday. Right. And tomorrow, better, better than, than today. today. Okay. Yes. Shukran. Afwa, thanks. Okay. okay. It is really hot. It's 43 degrees Celsius we just saw on the thermostat in the car. So we've come back to the hotel and we've had a bit of a rest. Uh, it's kind of seems like the thing to do here. 
because it's so hot in the hot hours of the day. I mean, you like being outside, you're just instantly cooking, being in the middle of the Sahara here. Anyway, here's the hotel. I'm gonna show you around this very odd uh, situation here. Before we explore the hotel, I just wanna take a quick second and say a huge thank you to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. Curiosity Stream is basically like the documentary version of Netflix. They have thousands of documentaries. There's a few I've been watching lately. One in particular is Butterfly Effect, and it shows you the entire process of how certain things came into play. For example, the invention of the internet in detail, but it's quite small and concise, so you can digest a lot of really interesting information in a short period of time. There's also also some really cool travel documentaries on there. What stands out the most about Curiosity Stream is how affordable it is. If you use my link in the description, curiositystream.com forward slash indigo, you'll get, okay then, let's check out this Libyan hotel. Beautiful, beautiful hotel, don't get me wrong, but it's empty. We did, I'll show you a, a clip of breakfast just now. So here we are at breakfast. Some coffee, yogurts cheese, tuna, beans. I'm the only one here. So I'll take you inside the hotel now. I'm not sure, but just two police cars just pulled up full of guys and they're just staring at me. So I don't know. I feel like I'm always being monitored here. Anyway, let's go in this hotel, get away from that situation. There's a few employees over there to my left. Through here is where breakfast was this morning. These are all police officers that just walked in. Apparently, you know, the whole town knows that I'm here because it's very, very rare to see a foreigner here. So it's a strange feeling, to be honest. Anyway, I'll take you down to the rooms. You'll see how big this is. I don't believe those are finished houses. Those are just shells of houses that were never finished. Here's my room. And there's even a Mercedes-Benz shower head here. I completely understand that the country's been through absolute hell in recent history, so I understand why, why the police, but um, it's, it's still quite intense. But as you can see, our, our tour guide, Muhammad Ali, super nice guy, it's nice to hear, and it, I've talked to quite a few people now here in Libya, and the common theme seems to be that economically, current times are difficult, but safety and security, it's the best it's been in a long time. It seems to be improving the economic situation so fingers crossed that momentum keeps keeps going and economically people can be feel more stable we're about to go out and meet some people who are into like four-wheel driving and things so that should be interesting to meet those guys so we've been back here at the hotel for a couple hours just waiting for the heat of the day to drop because like i said you can't be outside like it's outside for like two minutes i'm sweating there's huge potential here for tourism especially if you're into history Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. I don't know if you can hear me, it's quite windy, but we've just driven out into the desert in a land cruiser and we've climbed this mountain. In the background is actually Algeria. I, my guide's phone just went off and it said, welcome to Algeria. So pretty special to be out here, you know, and Libya has so much to see, you know, the natural beauty as well. There's a lot more to see than, than the war and things that you see when you turn on the television. I mean, those things are happening or they have happened, but uh, there's also this other side to see, you know. of a mad driver he's drifting along the ridges and like filming it on his phone and, and taking selfies and things it's quite funny the driver was just saying that he can normally drive all the way up here but the the dunes have shifted they change shape and morph so far libya is nowhere near as intimidating as what i thought you know i, I did expect 
I did expect a lot more military presence if I'm being honest. I did ex expect a lot more questioning and checkpoints. The places I've been and I think the places where I'm going to be traveling on this Libya trip are relatively stable. There are parts of the country which are not so much but you know comparing to what it was like you know even one to two years ago there's been war and things and you know there is little scratchings of it here and there but nothing compared to what it was. Everybody's friendly with each other and saying hello and things I guess after going through so much. Libya is a country I've wanted to visit for two years now, over two years and uh, to be here it's really special. It's a lot steeper than it looks on camera, I guarantee it. Success. Slide update. Came up this hill here. And now we're bellied out on this huge ridge. I swear we were gonna roll just then. <gasps> that was scary. Is that your signature, the one sandal? <laughs> how old is he? 21. That's like how I used to drive when I was 21 as well. <laughs> cool, so we're here with our crazy driver here. And Fraj, what do you do for work? Are you driving full time or what else do you do? Like free enterprise, you know, it's... So basically, whatever is available, he will do. And what do you do for fun? No, it's mainly work, work, work. Work, work, work. Yeah. Have you travelled to other parts of the country? Yeah, he's been to the capital, okay. Tripoli, mainly. What's it like in the capital compared to here? Did you like it or is it too busy? No, 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 Yeah, no, no, he did not fit there at all. Yeah, too okay. much, so he had to come back here. Okay, thank yeah. you for the adventure, shukran. Thank you, first ahead. So we've come back into the old city and we've been surprised with this really beautiful ambiance in the middle of the desert. Nice lighting and they've got all these cool knick knacks and things. Teapots and everything and they're cooking us a meal now. It's really beautiful, look at this. This is really special, I was not expecting that. What a setting. Old petrol canisters here and lots of teapots. What do we have here? Is it couscous? It's rice. Rice. Interesting stories. So, uh, you know, like learning, he's found out this was during the kingdom, during the king, the, the cigarettes were known as sport. And you could see it's in English and in Arabic. And then when, when, during Gaddafi's time, it changed into Riyadi, which is the Arabic word for sport. Okay. So picking up on things like that, basically. So they were saying. selling cigarettes as something to use for sports? Well, obviously, those days, you know, uh -huh. you would put cigarettes as for uh, only a fit sportsman would, uh, would do that. Right. Yeah. When he can get the, the whole group of a certain product together, that's even more exciting. He said the more he does that, the more he wants to, to do it. It's worth a lot of money as well. 1923, yeah? So, be, yeah? Italians were into uh, tomatoes, weren't they, for the past spaghetti? It's after midnight, still like 33 degrees Celsius outside there. It's, the desert life is pretty crazy. All the shops are open now, it's like people live nocturnally here. That collection there was 
unbelievable and uh, such a nice dinner spread there strange day very interesting the police are nice and things they say salam alaikum and they're friendly but you know they are always aware of what you're up to so you know they say it's for our protection so you know that's great in the next video we're going to be driving eight hours across the desert again and we're going to be heading to tripoli the capital we're going to see more of the capital and, and see how life is there nowadays hopefully meet some people it is pretty hard but uh, we will do our best to meet people and, and ask them how's life and things anyway thank you very much for watching this very strange video i know it's a random eclectic mix of different things but you know i'll take what i can get in this country just to get access into this country is a, a privilege and an honor to 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 get in here i took some different photos today if you want to check them out check them out on my instagram indigo.traveler with two l's thank you so much for watching and in case i don't see you good afternoon good evening and good night